Hi, this is Lou Adler. I want to give you a quick overview of a webcast I conducted a few weeks ago called the Recruiter's Survival Guide. The idea was to look at the hiring process from a different perspective, thinking upside down, inside out, and backwards. also want to contend, and this is a book that I read recently called Peopleware by Tom DeMarco and Timothy Lister. It's actually how do you put software development teams together. And one interesting point that I think is worthy for anybody who's uh, recruiting top talent is that uh, Marco and DeMarco and Lister had a contest, it was called the Coding Wars, C-O-D-I-N-G, Coding Wars, where they, over a long number of years, I think it was in the 80s and 90s, they did hundreds and hundreds of people, did a similar software study, and they spent a serious amount of time preparing a software project. And it turned out, the, the quick result of it, the bottom half was half as productive as the top half, which is interesting. I should, could say at the top half is twice as productive as the bottom half. But the top quartile was three to four times better than the bottom quartile, which says that the top quartile is pretty significant and pretty important to target. So a lot of the stuff what I do is always targeting the top 25%. And I think to get the top 25%, you do have to think upside down, inside out, and backwards. So let me start right side up, and I think you'll see where I'm going here. So here's the what I'll call it the recruiting funnel. I'm actually saying in some ways it's the scarcity model recruiting funnel, although you, it really goes to active or passive candidates. But what I, call, what I define scarcity is where the demand for candidates is far greater than the supply. And clearly, when you start off, you have a pool of candidates. It could be a resume database. It could be a... Uh, search that you've conducted on LinkedIn or a Google search where you got a pile of resumes. It doesn't matter, but you've got a pool of candidates, some lists or some names. The second step is you might actually get referrals, which would could be part of your pool, but it's a little bit more targeted. So you get leads, you get referrals. And it could be from the first list or it doesn't matter how you get them, but certainly you get leads and referrals. You then have prospects. You call people up and you say, hey, would you be interested in talking about this career opportunity? They raise their hand and qualify. I consider them a prospect. They're not candidates yet. You've got to convince the person to be a serious candidate. And generally speaking, if you're going after the top 25%, they have to see it as a clear career move. You then have to assess these people, see if they're qualified for the job and interested in all the components fit right, salary, location, all those kinds of things. So they become serious finalists. Then you negotiate the offer and you get a hire. So that's the basic recruiting funnel. What's interesting, though, some companies make a shortcut. They post an ad to a group of people, hope they don't know exactly what the talent pool is, but they post an ad or send a bunch of emails out and say, hey, apply. And they go right through the, from the talent pool to a candidate, bypassing the leads, referrals, prospects piece. In my mind, that has to be reconsidered. When you start a search, you should actually conduct what I'll call a supply versus demand analysis. Take a look at what's the supply of candidates in that marketplace versus demand for those candidates. Career Builder actually has a very cool product called their Talent Portal. We actually can conduct a supply versus demand analysis by geographic region by job title. I do a simpler thing. I look on LinkedIn and I say, how many candidates possess these skills versus how many people are looking for these candidates who possess these skills? And you can see if the ratio of demand for talents is two or three times greater than the supply, you've got a problem. If the supply is four or five times greater than demand, hey, you're probably going to be able to get a person by leapfrogging from the talent pool to the candidate list. Maybe. But then you got to test the quality of the pool. Are the people good that you're attracting? If they're not, well, then you probably got the bad pool. That's just a quick way to do it. If you got a big bunch of resumes, just pick 50 at random and see if they're any good. I tell you, give you a sense of you got a quality pool, but you got to make that analysis before you go down a sourcing path. You also should check your one statistic from a metric standpoint is what's the applicant to candidate ratio, meaning someone who applies versus someone you decide, hey, this is a serious candidate you want to present to a hiring manager. Well, if that's a 1% or 2%, well, you spend a lot of time maybe fishing in the wrong marketplace. I have another metric. If you go down the lead list, hey, what's your leads per referrals uh, to get to a prospect? Yeah, hey, call someone up. They look pretty good. Are they a prospect? I got a referral. Are they a prospect? Are they qualified and worthy? And are they at least open-minded to talk to a hiring manager or seriously consider your job? That's what I consider a prospect. And then how long does it take to get a group of prospects together that you can present to your hiring manager? Now, these are people who are interested and qualified but not yet seriously uh, ready to apply. 
Now, then you do get what's your ratio of converting prospects to candidates. And you have two paths here. One, getting a referral to get a prospect to a candidate. Another one is right away, just jump in and get everybody who applies as a candidate. You need to look at the quality of those two groups and two paths, but they are two different paths. Then you got the ratio of candidates per hire. How many candidates does a manager need to see before they hire someone? Now, let me kind of go through some of my statistics here. I believe that if you get a good, strong, warm referral and do it right, and uh, in our training we show you exactly how to use LinkedIn Recruiter to get referrals. I'm going to contend that once you get a referral done properly, 80% of those should become prospects. It takes a lot of good recruiting skills to do it, but it's not that hard. It just takes good recruiting skills to do it. Getting the names of referrals is actually quite easy using LinkedIn Recruiter. I'm actually going to contend if you're a good recruiter and know how to convert a lead to a prospect, you can actually build that prospect pool in 72 hours. And I'm considering four prospects to send to the hiring manager. That's pretty cool. 72 hours you get, and I'm going to contend these are top 25% people. Now, what's your ratio of converting a prospect to a serious candidate? Yes, I'm serious. They're qualified and interested, but somehow they don't see the jobs they can remove. Well, I'm going to suggest that the recruiter and the hiring manager have to do that together. In fact, I like the hiring manager to own that process. That's their engagement. They own that component. I, the recruiter, will give you serious prospects. You've got to convince this person to work for you. Not me. You've got to. I'll help you, but you've got to do it. Changing the rules a little bit here, but it's a critical rule to change. And in my mind, if you do it right, you should be able to only need to send in four candidates before one gets hired. And if you start targeting the pool with the top quartile, target the pool. In fact, I'm going to suggest you get leads and referrals who are in the top quartile. You will maximize quality of hire. You will minimize time. Literally, let's be real frank. If you get a pool together in 72 hours, which is not that hard if you focus on it, first 48 hours, you should be pretty much done. LinkedIn Recruiter allows you to do it. If you understand how to engage your hiring manager uh, and convince that person to convert a prospect to a candidate, it takes a little bit of coaching. 60% is reasonable. It means you probably have to have two prospect pools of three to four people each to pull to get four. But you should be able to get someone hired. It was four finalists within two weeks and get, uh, get them hired two weeks after that. Minimize the time and minimize the cost. I mean, let's be real frank. The biggest driver for cost is time. I mean, sometimes companies don't count that. But the reality of it is uh, the longer it takes to fill a job, the more it costs. So if you get it done within two to three weeks, get the person hired, which is not unreasonable. Four weeks is to me on the high end. Uh, you got a pretty cool process. And you got to really compare these two. Going directly from a talent pool, this is the post and pray model. Are you getting good candidates? If you are, it should be equally as efficient. If you're not, it could take months. It's problematic when you wait for a good person to arrive. So this is where you really start having to think about the big picture as well as the small picture together. Think about any business process as a strategy. Talent scarcity versus talent surplus. Tactics. What are the tactics you're using? If you really have a scarcity situation where the demand for talent is greater than supply, you better have tactics and processes that go that. That's the lead referral uh, prospect candidate flow. Most companies, irrespective of the supply versus demand equality, they'll still drive everything to the left here, uh, drive everybody to be a candidate because they feel they got to report that way. Now, both of them are uh, legal processes, different reporting, but both are legal processes. You gotta have the right processes in place to support your strategy and your tactics. Then you gotta have all the people on the same page. I mean, you got people. Let's think about the dominant people. It's the candidate, the recruiter, and the hiring manager. How often are they on the same page? It's almost problematic when they're on the same page. So we're all using different processes, different strategies, different techniques. So when you do it that way, when these things are out of alignment, all you've got is this little wedge right here in the middle here that actually says, hey, our people, strategy, tactics, and prices are overlapping. Well, I'm going to suggest with the right strategy and the right metrics, tying it together actually pushes all of those together, controls the process. To get to the 80% lead to prospect ratio, 72 hours to build a prospect pool, at least 60% of your candidates uh, converting, uh, your prospects converting to candidates and getting four candidates prior, all of those things are pretty much overlapping. But you can't, recruiter can't do it alone. The system, the metrics have to do it. And that's really what our whole training and processes are about is understanding that you've got a scarcity funnel, you have different kind of processes, you need strategy, tactics, processes, and people in alignment, and you have to have metrics to hold it together so it doesn't uh, wean out of control. And I'm going to contend in most companies, everybody's doing their own thing. 
I mean, I don't even know if there's any overlap between strategy, strategy, excuse me, strategy, tactics, process, and people. It's almost like they go out of control. You add another person into it, uh, the whole system goes out of control. What well, controlled system looks pretty much like that. And those metrics, if they're tighter, the, the circles come together and the overlap gets bigger and your efficiency improves. That's the concept. Well, if that's the concept, uh, the strategy, a scarcity strategy, here's how I would suggest you set up your sourcing plan. Here's a, the summary of a survey we did with LinkedIn. Pretty extensive survey. Did it two years in a row, had 4,500 people, fully employed people from medium sized to big companies. Most of them had at least three years or more experience, fully employed. We gave them a satisfaction survey. How happy are you? Are you looking for a job? And if you were looking for a job, what would you want? 28% are extremely happy not looking. But they would talk to a recruiter. It was a super, super job. 28% of 4,500. 40% weren't looking at all, but they would take a call from a recruiter to explore a career opportunity. 15% were actually looking very, very quietly, but only talking to people they knew very, very well who they worked with before. So all of these, 28, 40, 15, that's 83% that you're not going to get through a posting. They will not go from the candidate pool or from the talent pool to uh, apply. They won't do it. These people might, searchers, because they're going to Google or an aggregator to see if you can find a job. It's only 5% of those. 4% are networkers. They're networking with your current employees if they're connected to them. 8% are actually no connection to your company whatsoever. Might be good, might not be good. But I mean, that's a pretty narrow market of the fully employed. And most companies, I'm going to contend, spend most of their resources going after that 8%, maybe the 4%, maybe the 5%, search engine optimization. Well, that's only, what, 9, 17% of the total marketplace. And they spend 90% of the resources. I think you got to shift it. Why don't you spend 20% on 17% of the marketplace. And in our training, we show you exactly how to optimize to get the best results there. But no more than 20%. 20% should be on targeted emails, probably to searchers and tiptoers. Now you got that 20%. Wow, interesting. You map to the your customer base. And the other 60% is networking, which is the 40% recruiters, some of these tiptoers, and a few super passives. Well, now all of a sudden you've got the right sourcing plan. 20% posting, 20% targeted emails, 60% networking, maps to your customer base using that scarcity recruiting funnel methodology we've just talked about. Well, that's what we do as a company. Performance-based hiring is a system, integrated system. Starts with a great job. Performance profiles, let's, if you want to hire a great person, you better give them a great job. Sourcing is focused on, let's source the way good people look. That's the 20-20-60 rule. Let's use an evidence-based assessment process rather than just letting it go at random or use yes-no voting. We have a two-question interview that everybody gets on the same page. We use a scorecard and everybody gets on the same page and we actually measure the variance on each factor. And we know that the wide variance, not a very good controlled process. Tight variances, good, good assessment process. But then we got to still close the deal. We got to re integrate recruiting with everything we do here. We got to convert. We start by converting a job into a career. We advertise careers. We use career, as we're interviewing candidates. We look for the fact: is this candidate's past performance in comparison to a job offer a career move? We do it all together. We're going to have a great hiring methodology, and we're going to hire the top 25% every single time. We have three core programs. Recruiter Boot Camp is our basic, passive, and active candidate recruiting for the top 25%. Our other program is performance-based hiring for managers. Managers play a critical role here at every step in the process, and they have to be fully engaged. Can't do it otherwise. Can't hire the 25% with hiring managers. Nobody else, most, many companies have training programs for hiring managers, but it's not interviewing. Interviewing is a subset of the whole process. Then we have our LinkedIn master course. If you have LinkedIn Recruiter, we have the only approved course for really understanding and optimizing and turbocharging LinkedIn Recruiter. We have a very unusual training program, 24-7, one year e-learning center. Okay. All our documentation, all our tools, all our technologies right there in one place. Portal to get to the training as well. You pay once, you can come for a year. Come to any recruiter boot camp, public option, anytime you want, live or online. If you get performance-based hiring certified, you can then come to LinkedIn Master Course at no additional fee either. But I mean, it's really one, one year, one price if you get certified. Even if you don't get certified, you can still come to boot camp as many times to get certified. So we make it easy for you. So next steps, uh, attend Recruiter Boot Camp uh, in September or next month, depending on when you hear this. You have them every single month. 
Uh, you want to find out the latest details, just info at AdlerConcepts.com. We'll be happy to get back with you. Hope this was helpful, the idea of a scarcity funnel, focusing on the needs of the top 25% and using the 20-20-60 rule for building a sourcing plan. You do those things, you're going to be well on your way to hiring great people every time. Thank you very much, everybody. Hopefully this was helpful, and I look forward to seeing you at boot camp.